Hey guys, it's Bang for about PC Gamer here. Now, a few of you have been asking me um, how much my PC costs or what parts do I have in my system, so I thought I'd do a little video just to basically rebuild my PC in the way I did it and um, kind of explain my my thoughts behind my hardware choices as well. So, with every PC build I've ever done, I've always started with a motherboard, and in my case, I bought the Intel Z97 platform. Um, I went for the Asus Maximus uh, 7 Ranger. Now the reason I went with this board is because um, in future I may go SLI and it has that capability but I wouldn't ever go beyond two cards I just don't think it's worth it. Um, it has very good power delivery and cooling on its uh, north bridge and south bridge so as an overclocker, um, that's something I definitely look for. Um, it's got really good features like uh, CMOS reset from the outside of the case and BIOS reset buttons. So once, say you do an overclock that um, makes your PC unstable, you don't have to then go in to your PC and you know take out the the battery so you can reset the BIOS and things like that. So I always look for little features that will help me out personally and last but not least it just looks really really good and um, and it has a uh, amazing build quality so I went ahead with the Asus Ranger um, Maximus 7 from and it came in at 135 um, but for that price range um, you do get a lot for your money um, after the case, I usually, after the motherboard, should I say, I usually always buy a case and that will determine if I can fit all the components I plan on buying for my motherboard. So, when it comes to cases, I have to say I'm a bit of a Corsair fanboy. Um, like, my memory is Corsair, my power supply is Corsair, and my case is also Corsair, but um, it's hard to argue because they do make really, really good looking cases from all price ranges. Um, I went for something more um, more towards uh, better for water cooling because so I've got a 360 millimeter radiator so I bought the Corsair Graphite 700, 700T full tower. It allows you to mount a 360 radiator in the front and a 360 radiator in the top. So perfect for water cooling. Um, it comes with built-in fan controller for up to six, I think five fans. So it does the three fans at the top of my case and the two fans in the front of the case. And it's got a massive window so you can have a look at your components. So um, it's an amazing case, I love it and it looks great. So at 150, it is expensive, I'll admit, but you're never gonna really need to buy another one for any reason. So may as well spend the money now and and it would be a stable investment. So that was my thoughts behind buying this. Um, so with the case and the motherboard out of the way, the last thing I buy is uh, the power supply before I buy anything else because you know that would determine what I can power, um, the limits of the graphics cards I can buy and things like that. So once you get all of these three components done first, you kind of know exactly what you can do with your build. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the power supply I chose. And again, like I said, I'm a bit of a Corsair fanboy and I went with Corsair, but it's hard to argue when you are making arguably some of the best um, PC hardware out there. So regardless if I'm a bit biased towards them, the quality is uh, unquestionable. So I went personally with the Corsair AX860. I think personally now with um, graphics cards becoming so um, power efficient, you're never going to need anything over 850, 860 for a dual GPU setup. So I think 860 is going to serve me um, very well and it's going to fulfill all my needs because um, I, might, I may get a, another GTX 980 Ti in the future um, as I am going to be moving to 4K really, really soon. And knowing myself, I probably won't be happy with anything under 60 FPS. So um, the Corsair AX860 Platinum rated. Um, check any review you want. It's one of the best power supplies out there. And um, 
it will give me great flexibility when it comes to um, upgrading my graphics card. So I had to get a really, really good power supply and this Corsa AX860 is definitely one of the best out there. So with all those three bought, I can now move on to other components at random. Um, may as well move to the memory since we're on Corsair. Um, so moving on to the memory, I got a really good deal on um, six, a 16 gigabyte kit of Corsair. And um, I ended up getting the I ended up getting the Vengeance Series Pro Red, but so this is the version I got. So you get two sticks of eight gigabytes running at 2400 megahertz, and uh, the timings are decent: 11, 13, 13, 31. Uh, they could be a bit tighter, but you would have to pay a little bit extra for that, and I don't think it makes too much of a difference anymore. So 16 gigabytes of uh, DDR3 at 2400 megahertz. The reason I upgraded from eight was because um, while I do quite a bit of video editing, um, when it comes to doing the very high resolution stuff like 4K, it really does fill your system um, memory up really, 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 really bad. So when soon as I move to 16 gigabytes, my projects on, on the timeline are so much smoother. I can scroll across and everything stays in sync. and Having to stop videos just so uh, everything can be in sync is kind of annoying. Since upgrading the memory, all my projects have been so much easier to produce, so it was definitely worth the money. So that's pretty much taken my total up to 530. It's getting quite costly now, but um, this is a build where I've kind of upgraded over time. I didn't buy it all at once, and um, it's definitely... Um, quite a costly rig now that I think about it but um, it performs really really well so with the memory done I'm gonna move on to my storage so I've got a I've got one solid state drive and three mechanical drives so I've got 120 gigabyte um, OCZ agility free they don't sell them anymore so I'm just gonna pick basically any 120 gigabyte um, SSD and just add it just just to kind of boost up the total price so although this isn't the SSD I have this is pretty much the kind of cost up the kind of price I paid for it or what you would have to pay for it today um, moving on I bought I've got like an extra two gigabytes of storage two to three gigs I think I've got 2.5 so I've got two one terabyte um, Seagate Barracuda drives and then I've got another 300 megabyte um, course. I think it's a Western Digital Raptor, which spends at 10K. So it's kind of a faster drive than a standard mechanical, but it's nowhere near as fast as an, as an SSD. So I've got about 2.5 gig storage. So I'm gonna buy this one, tera, this two terabyte Seagate Barracuda and pretty much just leave it at that. So moving on to uh, so I've got the power supply, the memory. I'm going to move on to my cooling. I've actually got a water cooling kit from XSPC. Now, um, I'm not exactly an expert on water cooling, so I, I went and bought myself a water cooling kit. And it basically gives you a pack with everything you need to um, set up water cooling. And the reason I went with water cooling is because I wanted to get into um, water cooling my graphics cards. Um, in the past, I've had a water cooled R9 290. Um, at the time, was pretty much the only way to keep it cool because the reference designs were so terrible. And um, since then, I've obviously I've stuck with it and it now cools just my CPU. So the kit I bought was the XXPC 360 Raystorm. They no longer sell it this particular model anymore they've upgraded it so um, I'm gonna try and pick one at the same price range so I bought mine for about 160 pounds so the closest thing I can get to that really is for the 750 EX420 now it's 20 pounds more but it's a 360 radiator pretty much the same reservoir and the same pump um, moving on I'm gonna Grab the CPU because I haven't done that yet. 
and obviously I went with the Intel i7 4790K. Now I didn't bother buy the retail version because basically all you get a box and a fan and I, one thing I don't need is a free heatsink so I ended up getting um, just the OEM version. All you do is get a unmarked box with the chip that's literally all I needed so why pay more? Uh, the 4790K um, I upgraded from a i7-3770 non-K which I could only push to about 4.3 gigahertz. Um, I noticed it was holding back my graphics card a little bit so getting the 4790K which I've since overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz has been um, definitely a boost in performance which um, I'm pretty happy to see and it's getting the best out of my GTX 980 Ti so I've got no complaints even though it's quite costly um, it does pretty much everything very very well so I've got no complaints so we've basically breached a thousand pounds now and um, me myself looking at how much I've spent over the course of time of building this has been a bit of an eye-opener but um, it hasn't felt that costly to me as I've done it gradually like it's just been a bit of a project to me building it um, step by step but um, I've got no problems with my system it works really really well and it pretty much I know when a new game comes out I don't even need to check minimum specifications I can just run it and I can pretty much run it at maximum so pretty much coming to um, wrapping it up now I'm going to choose the graphics card now at the moment the GTX 980 Ti and the AMD Fury X are the best cards on the market um, I went with the GTX 980 Ti um, as soon as at, on launch week, about three, I think two more days, two days after launch. The reason I went with it is because I was just, I was, I was just so surprised how close it was to the GTX um, Titan X in performance. And I knew just from looking around that the Fury X is definitely not going to compete with the Titan X. So if the Titan, if the GTX 980 Ti can pretty much match the Titan X by two or three frames per second less then overclocking is just going to bridge that gap and obviously now that the Fury X is out and it doesn't really overclock you can tell that the GTX 980 Ti is definitely the, the best graphics card to buy over £500 so in the UK right now um, prices are pretty good you can get a reference design um, GTX 980 Ti for £525 so I'm going to add that to the basket. You also get a free game if you're going to buy one now. So my total in spending comes to around £1,616. So that's pretty much my system. Um, I'll show you um, what it looks like now all built in a minute. But um, that's pretty much what I spent on it for all those that were interested. And, and if you wanted to uh, build a similar build you, in the UK, you're going to be looking at that kind of price range. So, Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, um, definitely an eye-opener to me how much I've spent. But um, PC gaming is one of my main hobbies. And I think when you really think about any hobby over a year, whether it's like you do karate or, I don't know, you do rock climbing and things like that, 1000 just over a thousand pounds on a hobby for a year it's not it's not that bad it looks really bad when you look at it as a lump sum but i think if you can't put a thousand pounds into your hobby over a year then you're not very very serious about it in my opinion so that's just the way i look at it anyway so and that's me just basically justifying um the cost so anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed the video i'll leave you with just a few clips of what the system looks like made up and um, let me know what you think.